Today I'm going to show you three very helpful turnarounds in the key of A and some common variations that y'all will definitely recognize and it'll give you a bunch of extra material to play. Let's jump right in. Number one. And a one and two and three four back to one one thing that's important to know is bar one is that last chord that we're playing here so when we're doing this phrase that's bar one and and so on <laughs> At the end of the lesson, I'm gonna come back and play all of these again with the metronome, clicking very slowly so y'all can play along. One other really important tip is, even though on the tab it says to play just these two fingers, I want you to look above the tab where it has the chord diagram and it shows you to hold this full E7 chord. The reason for that is because we wanna be able to fill this out later and play bigger sounds like this. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get the idea. If we're just holding these two fingers, then then the rest of the strings sound like garbage. A really common variation on this same turnaround is the triplet variation. That sounds like this. The difference here is we're playing two and a three and a four and a one and two and three, four and one. These specific turnarounds for me started with Robert Johnson. He'll actually mix those two together, something like this. Like a triplet on the first one. So kind of alternating back and forth. Learn both of these and then vary them up. Now the next one y'all heard is very familiar. You've heard it a lot in the key of E sounding like this. Sometimes it's helpful to play something in position, meaning where your hand just was. So check this one out. It's the same thing, but in a lower position on the neck. Sounds like this. And then of course there's the triplet variation just to train your ears and rhythm a little bit. Let's hear that one. Just like we said before, the triplet variations can be mixed in with the eighth note shuffle variation. So feel free to change that back and forth. Remember at the end, we're gonna do a slow playthrough with the tabs on the screen. Now in this high one up here, you've also heard this with full chords like this. Now so far we've just done descending turnarounds, which are by far the most common, but occasionally there's ascending turnarounds too, ones that go up. Here's an example like this. When you're doing this ascending movement, I like to bring my thumb over and play. When you use your thumb, you're gonna get a lot snappier notes and a, a lot more power. And then this ending with going to the E7 here, we're using a ninth chord. So this is a very helpful one. If you can't play this full ninth chord with this third finger barred off like that, just play this. Now I've actually got one more bonus turnaround for you, but I wanna explain something first. All these turnarounds are in the key of A. And that means in the turnaround, they actually end on an E7 chord to get the cycle to start back over again when you start the 12 bar blues again. But what if you're using this turnaround as the ending of the song and you actually wanna end it? Well, the strategy is a little bit different. And what you wanna do is instead of playing that E7, you wanna end it on the A chord. Let me demonstrate that with one of our turnarounds we've already done. We'll call this one the finisher. Now there's there, I'd never played the E7 chord. I did the same turnaround. But I slid into the A chord. Now I gave it a little tension on this chord and slid back up, but essentially instead of doing the ending E7, and this is where we'd start over again. 
-hmm. right? And then the whole blues would start over again, whatever style you're playing in. But if you want to finish it, don't play that E7, or at least if you're going to play it, play it very, very short and make sure in that same measure you go back to this A chord. All right? So the bonus turnaround is going to use this as a finisher. One thing that people do often when they use these finisher turnarounds is they'll actually do a riff-based turnaround. And these are really fun because you get to play single notes. Most commonly, people are going to use the blue scale in the key of the song that they're playing. Here's an example. Learn this one and start to use it. Now here, we're just using the blues scale, and this is in box five. Now, if you want to use this riff-based turnaround as an actual turnaround to get the 12-bar blues going again, all you would do is do the same thing that we did before, adding that E7 chord at the end instead of finishing on this A. That would sound like this. And then you start going into the blues again, okay? Now let's do a slow playthrough of all those with the variations. For these, we get the metronome clicking at 60 BPM. Here we go. One, two, three, four. This is number one with the triplet variation. Three, four. Number two is the descending one high up the neck, starting on this chord. Okay. Let's do it with the full chords first. Two, three, four. Now the same thing with just the string pairs. Three, four. Now here's that same thing, but the low version that we talked about. Here we go. Three, four. And then now with the triplet variation, same thing. Three, four. Now let's check out that ascending one. Two, three, four. Now let's do that finisher example. We're first gonna do the basic descending one, and then we'll do the riff based one. One, two, three, four. Now finally, the riff-based finisher one. One, two, three, four. Now these are really great for your playing, and if you're curious about how you can start to put this in context of actual 12-bar blues, check out this video over here, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll see you guys there.